And so in a moment, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do what I say when I say go. This is really confusing for me too, so I'm going to read it again. I want you to do what I say when I say go. I want you to do what I say when I say go. I want you to pat your mouth. Go. Okay. Stop. Right where you're at. I would say over 95% of you in this room are patting your cheek. When I said to do what I say. All right. And, and, and there's a principle behind this. Now, there's a couple of really good listeners right here. You're pretty good right there, aren't you? You're pretty solid, all right? This whole section right here, not so much, all right? (laughs) So here's the deal. This is really hard in what we're going to talk about tonight. This concept of we always tell others to do what we say but sometimes we follow them by their actions. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Your simple actions will speak louder than your words. The idea is, do your words line up with your actions? And that's what we're going to look at in Titus tonight. Okay? So there's this guy, really old dude, and he is, some people think he say, says this, some people doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. But this is a quote that some people think he said, okay? He said to preach always, but use words when necessary. Some people think Francis of Assisi said this. Whether he did or not, I wasn't there. I'm not that old, okay? But the concept is really true. And it just goes to what we just did, that you are called to preach always, and you can use your words when necessary, that your actions speak louder than your words, okay? See, all of us in this room, we see what people are doing and we try to follow and do what they're doing. Like, for how many of you in this room have your driver's license? Raise your hand, okay? So, how many of you have heard your parents say this? I'm just following the flow of traffic. Yeah, yeah. It's good, all right? I've done it a few times too, right? The idea when you say that is I'm not doing anything that no one else is doing around me, right? And if you've been on a road trip before, it's that same concept. Hey, I'm gonna follow that car because that car is going 90. And if I just stay a couple feet away from them, the cop will see them first. And then I can just let out the gas and be like, oh, you got in trouble, all right? See, you see, here's the thing too. People are watching you. They are waiting for you to mess up. You know, it it, it happened this week. I I don't watch the news a lot, but there's some churches I follow. And every now and then you you see this prominent pastor of a church falls. And, And the comments all like jump on him. Now, I'll I'll be honest. Maybe I'm one of those guys, but I'm not without fault. And so I say this to say this, whatever you say, whatever you do at school, people are watching you. One moment you may be talking about how Jesus made a difference in your life. And the next moment you have this moment of, oh no, what did I just do, right? Like, you know how hard it is to apologize to your brother or your sister when they're younger and you realize you messed up? Or maybe you have to apologize to your mom or your dad. It's hard. So what we're going to do tonight is if you've got your Bibles, I think we're going to put it on screen. But this is some instruction that what happens is given to Titus. Okay? And it's in Titus 2, 1 through 10. And this is what it says. 
But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-control, sound in faith and love, and in steadfastness. All right. Do I have verse three? There we go. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanders or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and to train the young women to love their husbands and their children. To be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may, may not be reviled. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself all respects to be a model of good works in your teaching. Show integrity and dignity. And sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Bond servants are to be submissive to their own masters in everything, that they are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not pilfering, but showing all good faith so that everything they may adorn, the doctrine of our God, our Savior. So here's what this is all about. He goes through and he says, hey, if you're going to teach, this is what I want you to teach. And, and there's this hierarchy of commands. So all the older men should be teaching the younger guys. The younger guys should be teaching the younger guys. The same for women. It, it gets passed down. Like there should be someone that you are helping to see who Jesus is and how to have and how to help them follow Jesus. And, and what it says in this verse is it's not just about what you teach, but it's about your actions, right? It's about your actions. So some of you are in here and you go to school with some peers and there might be someone in here that says they're on this. Man, I saw them do this and it wasn't, it wasn't really follower of Jesus like because they see you and they make a decision on you based on what they see, not what they hear. Now, whether it's fair or not, it, it, it's just, that's how it is, right? People make judgments all the time, whether it's fair or not, all right? But here's what captures my attention. Verses seven and eight. This is what I think I wanna focus on with you guys. It says to show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works and in your teaching show integrity and dignity and sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. Here's what this means. It means that you should be so far above reproach that no one can say anything negative about you because you are modeling it with your attitude and your actions. Like, you know that really mean kid at school that just walks past and just pushes your books down and you avoid that hallway at all costs? Do they do that still? They did in my day. They just booked you. They called it booking you, right? Or, or so maybe it's that kid that's in the hallway that just has to say something about you or your hair or whatever, right? So my thing in high school, I didn't comb my hair. I just didn't care, right? It really, I'll be honest. Like when I fell asleep at the desk, it kind of messed up my hair anyway. So why would I want to comb it when I'm just going to take a nap in study hall? All right? But what happens is there's certain hallways you avoid because you know that one person is there or maybe it's that one teacher, right? And so what this passage says, it says this that your opponent may be put to shame having nothing evil to say about you. Like that's the kind of life that you should live. That when someone tries to say something evil, they just can't think of anything. There's just, they can't find anything. And, and that's what this verse is telling Titus. Titus, the way that you live matters. The, because what you're going to teach this church, these people that I've left you with, it makes a difference in how you live your life. Show yourself to be a model, having nothing evil to say about you. That's really, 
really, really hard. Can you imagine if that's the way that you lived your life? That there's nothing that they can find evil about you. You know, if you're the president at some point, I mean, they're constantly trying to find things to throw in your face, aren't they? And they're trying to dig up your past. Your past matters. But imagine if they can't find anything. Imagine if you go to school and you just follow Jesus and your words and your actions line up and there's nothing that they can say about you. For some of you, you may have this really high position at school, but your actions outside of school are terrible. And your friends or your peers are seeing that and they're thinking, how in the world do they follow Jesus? For some of you, you may be sitting in the room and you may be here following Jesus and you're looking at someone else thinking, how are they a Jesus follower? Their actions are not lining up. Well, my question for you is how can you help them? How can you have a conversation in truth and love and point them in the right direction? Because that's about what Timothy's about or uh, Titus is about ready to do. What does obedient look like in your situation? So here's what it says. In verse 3, 2, it says to speak evil to no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy towards all people. It says to avoid quarreling. What's quarreling? Fighting, arguing. Absolutely. And some of you, like you love to fight. Like you are just waiting to go home tonight and for your mom and dad to say, hey, your room is filthy. And you already have your defense, right? Because here's my defense. Well, I'm sorry. I was at church today worshiping God, our Savior, (laughs) while you were at home doing whatever, right? I was at church, right? You have your defense ready to go. You are ready to pick a fight. And you are ready. You are armed and ready to go. For some of you, you know, like for me, it was my report card is coming out and I need to be ready. I remember it as clear as day. My dad asked me to help put a desk together. And he said, it'll be 20 minutes. It's not gonna be 20 minutes. So I started helping him and it was finals week. I knew it was finals week. And I'm terrible at taking tests. Well, I helped him for all six hours. And it was like one in the morning. And I said, can I go to bed? I have school in the morning. He goes, sure. So I took the test. I think I got like a 58% on it. I like aced it, right? (laughs) And so I ended up getting a C in the class. But here's the truth. Me getting 100% on this test wouldn't have made me get a B in the class. It wouldn't have helped. But I blamed everything when that report card came out. Do you remember that desk that took 20 minutes to assemble? It changed my entire high school career, Father. Like I, I would have had so much more time to study because I would have been in my room devoutly looking. Like we put that on that one spot We are ready for that fight. What it says here is it says, do it without quarreling. It says to be gentle and show perfect courtesy towards all people. What people should we show perfect courtesy towards? All. All. It doesn't mean you get to pick and choose. Like, oh man, that person I don't like. I am not... I'm not going to show courtesy towards them. I mean, I, I'll be, we just moved into this new house and I'm a member of the homeowners association. And I'll tell you what, they are brave. 
Like there are neighbors calling out neighbors saying, hey, clean up your truck that's leaking stuff all over the driveway. Someone is saying, hey, I'm so thankful they put this political sign up so I can have my dog now poop on your yard. (laughs) It is crazy. I'm like, I wish my neighbors would talk to me. And I'm thinking, I'm your neighbor. What do you want me to do? I say hi. And, And then another neighbor says, hey, can... My, this is my favorite. I'll tell you this one because it's my favorite. The dad, the husband posts on Facebook. My new slogan to my wife is I will get right on that honey as soon as 532 mows their grass. I'm thinking 532 is in this Facebook post. They can read that. It is crazy, right? It's nuts. And these are grown adults. Yeah, 516, it's not me, all right? right? It's not me. But here's the deal. It says to show perfect courtesy towards all people. You don't get to pick and choose. You don't get to pick and choose the kids at school that you're nice to and not nice to. It doesn't say that you can pick and choose the teacher that you show courtesy to. It says everyone. So here's what you guys are going to do in small groups. The verse continues on and it starts talking about good work. And and the reason why that we do good work on this particular passage is because if you look in the previous verses that we talked about tonight, it's because that our attitude and our actions line up with what Jesus has done in our life. If Jesus hasn't done this work, the good works are all going to be in vain. He says, the reason why, Titus, that you need to do all of these things is because of what Jesus has done in your life. And this is how you're going to lead, because of what Jesus has done. So in your small groups, that's what you're going to start talking about. Because of what Jesus has done, this is what good works should do. And this is how they should be done. And it's not easy but Jesus says, this is the way it should be done. All right. See, here's, I'll close with this. Paul tells Titus in verse eight, that if, if Titus does these things, that it reflects on Paul, look at this in sound speech that cannot be condemned so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about anyone have it open. What does it say? Us. See, what Titus is doing reflects on Paul. What what you do reflects on a number of people. It reflects on you. It reflects on your mom, your dad, your families, your brothers, your sisters. It reflects on the people that are around you. If I was to go out and do something horrific tonight, my actions would reflect not only on me, but they would reflect on Deb, they would reflect on Shane, and guess what else they would reflect on? The church. And not just this church, but church in general. Because sometimes Christians have a really bad name for what one particular church does. So you're at, it says that what Titus does reflects on us all. I want you to think about that in your small groups. Let me pray. And then you guys are dismissed to your small groups. If you need to know where to go, I will help you down here in the front. Miss Tracy will be down here as well. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for allowing us to worship you through music. Father, I pray um, that you would help us for our actions and our attitude and our words to line up. That what we say we represent is also what we do. Father, I pray that because of who we represent, that people would see us and see our light that shines because of what you've done for us. Father, I pray you'd be with the small groups. Bless the time. We pray all these things in your name. Amen.